All right, so this is section 9.1 of sequences, examples 6 and 7, determining if a sequence diverges or converges. Now, when you think about those two words, those two terms, remember a divergent sequence, that's going to be a sequence that just it doesn't have a limit. So we're going to use the limit process in using us to, to help us determine if a sequence diverges or converges. And if a sequence doesn't converge to a particular number, then uh, that it's not going to have a limit. But if it does converge, then when we take when we use the limit process, as n is going to go to infinity, then our we're actually going to get some real number. Uh, and a lot of textbooks usually call call this number l. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at two examples here. And here comes the first one. Now it says use TI-89 or any graphing calculator to graph the first 10 terms of the sequence. Use the graph to make an inference about the convergence or divergence of the sequence. Verify your inference analytically and if the sequence converges then find its limit. Now <clears throat> first thing we want to do is go ahead and uh, use our graphing calculator to, to do, the, uh, do the graph for us. So what we're going to do is Again, now let's see, let's make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see everything. I uh, actually don't want that one, I want this one. Now, for this, remember, you've got to be in sequence mode, so you are you should be in sequence mode, and that's the way that uh, that, that should, should look like for you guys on your screen there. Now, when you, we only want the first 10 terms, so we're going to go to y equals, and... Uh, so our function here, so we're going to clear this out, and you're going to go ahead and put in, which in this case is 1 over n to the 3 halves, where you could just type in actually n to the negative 3 halves. That would be the, the same thing. So we're going to go ahead and type that in for our formula. So let's see, remember you're going to hit the x button, caret, and then I'm going to do negative and then just 3 halves. Um, so that's 3 divided by 2. So that's going to be our, our sequence right there. Now, a couple other things we want to take a look at. When we go to our window, all right, uh, n min, n max, so we're only looking at the first 10 terms, so 1 to 10, that's fine. But what I want to pay attention to are my y mins and my y max. So I'm going to change those to go from just negative 0.5 to 1. And we're going to kind of see what that looks like. The other thing I'm going to do is change my scale. For the y scale, I'm going to change that to 0.5. So every tick mark then will be only worth a half. So if I graph that, let's see kind of what we come out with. We see the first term's up here, second term is here, third term is here, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then seventh, and then eighth, ninth, and tenth. You can't really see those two guys. Uh, and they kind of look like they're right on the axis. So if I'm taking a look at this, you know, and I wanted to you know, draw a sketch of this, you know, that sketch would uh, make the, the graph look like it's it's approaching a particular number, in this case, zero. It doesn't look like it dips below the x-axis, but it does look like it's um, converging to, to zero. So graphically, and this is, you know, kind of how I want you guys to think about this here. So graphically, you know, our sequence looks like it is going to converge to zero. So these are the two ways, you know, that we've got to analyze things. First way is graphically, so it's going to look like it converges, there's a K, looks like it'll converge to zero. Now, analytically, so this is the other piece that we're going to take a look at. When you look at something analytically, we're going to use a formal kind of math process here, and in this case, we're going to use that limit process. So if we we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity, of a sub n, which is our sequence here of 1 over n to the 3 halves, then that is going to, you know the denominator is going to blow up really, really, really fast, so that's going to become a huger and huger number. First it's, and then eventually that's just going to converge all the way down to zero. So what that tells us then is that the sequence does in fact converge to zero. What this problem does, you know, if it does converge, find its limit. So we did find the limit and the sequence converges to zero. So that's all you have to do for this is, you know, graphically take a look at it and then analytically use the limit process to verify what we think is happening when we take a look at it from the picture. So 
Let's take a look at another example here, going through the same kind of idea. Now this time we've got this for a picture, 3 minus 1 over 2 to the n. So this one's going to be a little bit different because graphically we're going to take a look at one thing and then we're going to see kind of how that looks like. So go ahead and graph that in your graphing calculator and then we'll go ahead and analyze it using the limit process for this particular one. All right, so how did you guys do with this one? Graphically, it looks like the sequence is going to converge to 3. Analytically, when we use the limit process, of course, as n goes to infinity of our sequence here, uh, you're going to end up with 3 minus 1 over 2n. That blows up and goes to 0. So 3 minus 0, of course, is 3. So that tells us the sequence is going to converge to 3. Now, graphically, let me just make sure that you guys are okay uh, with that. So when you put that into your graphing calculator, of course, you'll have 3 minus 1 over 2 to the n. Now this is where you're going to have to kind of play with this a little bit, is getting your window right. And that just kind of takes a little bit of practice. So your x min and max goes from 1 to 10. Same thing with uh, your n min and max. Both of those, um, or your x min is going to start at 0 and uh, go to 10. Your n min will go from 1 to 10. Scale for the x's is by 1, but this is where you're going to have to play a little bit. Uh, your y min and max are going to go from 0 to 4, and your scale and that's gonna, just going to be 1. So that way, if you kind of take a look, you can kind of see where everything here just kind of hovers. If you actually plug in 1 for this, 2 to the first power, of course, is 2, so 3 minus a half is going to be two and a half. So when we take a look at that, our first term right here is two, 2.5. Now, of course, we verify that by looking at our table of values. Now, notice again, because negative one, zero, all the negatives are going to have an error with it because your starting term is, of course, is going to be the first one with n equal to one. So we've got 2.5, then 2.75, 2.875, 2.9. So as you go down through your table of values, you can tell like this is getting closer and closer and closer to 3. You know, 2.995, I mean, just look at those values. So as we increase our value of n, it's getting closer and closer to 3, which as we uh, go ahead and analyze our sequence analytically, we can definitely conclude that our sequence does converge to 3. So for example 6b, the sequence converges to 3. Alright, now let's go ahead and take a look at one other example, actually three examples, as we take a look at similar process, just kind of going through these guys here. Determine the convergence or divergence of the sequence with a given nth term, and if the sequence converges, of course, find the limit. So when we go through this first piece right here, for each one of them. So for a, you're going to say that you're going to write down the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus uh, negative 1 to the n over n. Now one of the things that you want to kind of notice here with this, the top in the numerator for this one, this particular term right here, let me change colors here so we can see that. Come on, change colors, there we go. This particular term, if n is, is um, an odd number, then that means this value is going to be negative 1. So if I have 1 plus a negative 1, that's going to give me a result of 0. So the numerator is always either going to be 0, or if I have n be a, uh, an even number, then that means this particular value right here is negative 1 to some power is going to be positive 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2. So the numerator is going to oscillate between 0 and 2. Uh, so that's one of the things you want to take a look at. Now, the denominator, on the other hand, when you analyze the denominator, so as n is going to go to infinity, that thing's just going to uh, grow really, really super fast, which means that as we take the limit of this particular sequence, our limit is going to converge to zero. So this sequence does converge to zero. Now, b, for b, B you can kind of rewrite a different way because they both have the same exponent. So here you could write that as 3 fourths to the n. So that could be another way that you write that one. Now again, as we go through the limit process for B, this one is also going to uh, converge because when you take a look at the denominator, 4 to the nth power, that's just going to grow super, super fast and that's going to blow up. And 3 to the n is going to get really that's going to grow 
well, just not quite as quickly as 4 to the n does. So the limit for this particular uh, sequence of 3 fourths to the n power as n goes to infinity, that is also going to be 0. That sequence is going to converge. Now c, c is going to be our interesting one because as you take a look at this, we've got our factorial stuff going on here. So I'm going to kind of write this one a little bit separately. Now remember, in mathematical terms here, when you're writing a sequence and you've got factorials, now remember, let's just kind of go in order here. Uh, if you have n, the term after it is going to be n plus 1, the term after that is going to be n plus 2, the term after that one is going to be n plus 3, and so on. So that's kind of one of the things that you want to uh, keep in mind. Now, of course, the two terms that are in our uh, formula here for part C, we've got an n plus 1 and an n. So in the one before n plus or n would just be n minus 1, and you guys get the idea for that. But I'm dealing with n and n plus 1 here. So the smaller of those two, two of course, is n. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to rewrite this. So the limit as n goes to infinity, uh, what we're going to do is just write our numerator like this. We're going to write this as n plus 1 times and then n factorial. And then the denominator, we're going to leave that the same as just n factorial because then those two guys, the n factorial pieces, both of those will cancel out. And so when they do that, then you're just left with the limit as n goes to infinity of plain old n plus 1. So infinity plus 1, well, that's still going to be infinity. So since that's infinity, that means this particular sequence, because we don't have an actual value for it, so this sequence is going to not converge, but it's going to diverge. So A and B, your, your uh, sequences for both of these, they converge, and for part C, the sequence diverges. All right, so after watching this video, hopefully you can you know how to tell whether a sequence diverges or converges by using the limit process as well as using your TI graphing calculator to graph these things. All right, thanks for watching these, and I will catch up with you guys soon. Peace out.